How's it going everyone? Dozer here and the question is, Dozer, should I build myself a vocal recording booth or should I record in my closet? I have minimal room treatment foam. I have like 60 pieces of foam or I have some blankets and stuff and I don't really have the acoustics to record my vocals. I'm getting a lot of room sound. What should I do? Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to address those. I'm going to give you a little tip on some things that you can do in order to maximize your recording quality. All right, first up, microphones. Chances are you probably got one of these because a big misconception is that you have to have a condenser microphone and your people that are coming over will be like, oh, he doesn't have a condenser microphone. He's got some stage microphone. He sucks. You know, you don't have to have a condenser microphone. Now let's talk about if you have no room treatment at all, you're gonna want a dynamic microphone. You're gonna want a dynamic microphone like this. You see this here? Now you wouldn't want this one. This is a $10 Dynex microphone that I use for recording tutorials. It's also omnidirectional, which means it picks up sound from everywhere. So I could do like an interview with someone and we could both talk into the microphone. They're sitting over here, I'm over here. Hey, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, what's going down? Whatever, okay? You can record a choir. You'd want to get like a super cardioid, cardioid, or hypercardioid type polar pattern. Now, the type of microphones that you know are usually recommended for this kind of stuff, or some that are you know really popular, are the Shure SM7B, the RE20. Those are two popular ones. One that I've actually heard vocals recorded on and was able to mix them really well was the AKG D5, which is right here. Okay. Now, here's where a problem lies. In order to crank these bad boys up, you got to give them a lot of gain. They need a lot of power from your preamp. Now, if you have a cheap preamp, basically maybe one that came with your interface, you might run into issues with noise when you're trying to crank the gain. All right? But they make a device. It's called the Cloud Lifter. Here it is right here. You basically plug this in after your audio interface. It gives you 25 decibels of clean gain. So instead of having to crank the gain up so much with your preamp, you already get an extra 25 dB and it's all clean gain. So the cloud lifter, there you go. Which I highly recommend if you're gonna be using a dynamic microphone. Now, one of the major good things about a dynamic microphone is that it rejects a lot of sound. That's why you see people carrying these things on stage. They have music going, speakers, speakers pointed towards them. They have all this stuff going on, yet they're using this and they're still able to perform live on stage. It rejects a lot of sound that doesn't need to be getting into the microphone. It usually only picks up, depending on the pattern, let's say if this is a super cardioid, it's picking up my voice right now. Okay, it's going to minimize all the other room sound. Gain, your gain staging. You're going to want to adjust your gain to where when you're certain distance from the microphone, your gain is just good enough to where it's picking up your voice. You don't want to crank it up to where you're capturing everything else. That should be common sense. But again, with a dynamic microphone, you're going to run into less problems. So if you have no room acoustics whatsoever, I recommend a dynamic microphone. Now, if you already have a condenser microphone, because everybody thinks you're cooler if you have one, just know that these can pick up hobbits farting in the Shire. A mouse could be eating a piece of cheese in the next room and I'm going to hear it digesting, I guess you could say. These things are really sensitive. But a good thing about these when it comes to preamps is you do not need a $2,000 preamp to get decent vocals because you're not going to crank the gain up. You don't need much gain for these. One of the main reasons for using those really expensive preamps on condenser microphones is because they want to drive, they want to use other um, functions inside that preamp to drive it. All right, they have some adjustments on there to drive the preamp and get that tube sound or whatever sound of that preamp they want. If you're just using, like I have an MU1820M, it's just got a regular TF Pro uh, preamp in it. It's not the super greatest quality, but it's good quality. I can actually crank that dynamic microphone and still get good results. But with this, I only need like a little bit of hair gain and this is gonna work. But that also comes down to microphone distance. When you're using one of these condenser microphones, you're gonna wanna adjust your gain, of course, when your artist is on the microphone. You don't need to be cranking the gain so high that you're picking up everything else, of course. So condenser microphones are going to pick up more sound, computers, and then if you start adding vocal take after vocal takes or you're stacking R&B vocals, if you have 12 tracks of R&B vocals on top during a chorus, every one of those sounds from each track that you recorded that was getting picked up from this microphone is going to add up to more noise and more noise and more noise and it could become an issue. Now, 
All right, so we know that if we're gonna have cheap room acoustics, we really should get a dynamic microphone because that's really gonna get rid of a lot of the sound. If we do have a condenser microphone, what can we do because these things are sensitive? Here's what you do. Let's say all you have is foam. All you have is this stuff, right? Well, what you can do is you can create a vocal corner. We're gonna use our whole room. This is gonna sound better than a booth. It's gonna sound better than your closet, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take all your foam pieces. You can even use blankets, pillows, mattress, whatever, because we're talking about vocals here, right? And we're talking about on a budget, okay? That's what we're talking about here. Let's not get it twisted. So you put your mattresses right up against the wall or put your foam against the wall, and then you put your foam on your ceiling, okay? And then another problem I see people doing is they take their microphone and then they put it over here and then they do their thing. Well, guess what? The sound is coming, is picking up from the front of the microphone. You've just treated this whole back wall and you're not using it to the advantage because as you're doing this here, you can still hear me. The sound is bouncing off the walls behind me coming back to this microphone capsule right here. So that's not what you want to do. What you want to do is you want to turn your microphone to where your treatment is in the corner. Okay, so now when I'm back here, sound that's bouncing off the walls back there is gonna come back off axis and basically not into my microphone capsule. It might pick up just a little bit, but not none that's gonna be noticeable, all right? That's okay, because guess what? It's gonna hit the wall behind me, but it's treated. So any sound that's coming from behind me right now and then sound that's bouncing off the wall is gonna hit the treated wall and the ceiling is not gonna really cause any issues. And if you have carpeted floor, you're gonna want some carpeted floor. So it's better to create a corner like this, a vocal area, than to actually be in a booth or something like that. All right, so what am I doing for vocals? What are my room acoustic situation for me? Well, for me, I have built mine professionally, and I've actually measured it with a measuring microphone to give me the best response possible. And you have to know how to do that kind of stuff in order to do it. You gotta know how to use a measurement microphone, you gotta know what you're looking at, you know, stuff like that. But I have videos down in the description to teach you how to build all the stuff. This right here is a corner base trap. It's floor to ceiling with a 32 inch front. It's got stuff back there. The materials will be in the video. And basically that's a corner base trap. I have another one over there, I have another one over there. Okay. And then I have ceiling clouds above me. All right, this is mainly for mixing, but since I have all this stuff, I'm able to use this in the corner. I have the ceiling clouds up there. I'll show you how I built those. I have this wall panel back here at the first reflection point to this monitor. I have another one over there. And then I have these little panels right here. This is for also for mainly for vocal recording, but I got these panels right here that I built, okay? And I have a wall section here. I can make it more live by removing these and I'll get a little bit more liveliness in the vocal recording, which I might use for a backing vocal or for a hook or some uh, ad-libs or something like that. And I can also just put my panels here and cover this up. I can stack another panel on top. I can just have this little bad boy that I built right here and just get a little bit of the room sound. So I have a wall here that I built that is seven inches thick and it goes from floor to ceiling and it goes all the way across the other side of the wall over there. So I got a lot of treatment up. So this right here works perfect for me. Now, like I said, for you guys, you just build your little corner and then you record, record your vocals perfectly fine. All right, so I hope I answered the question pretty good. If I didn't, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop me a comment. I'll get to you as soon as I can. If you liked the video, please give me a like. It'll get this video to more people. Um, if you didn't like my video, then just go ahead and give me a dislike. And I, I like it if you tell me why you didn't like the video. If you don't agree with something I said, that's cool, man. Just go ahead and let, let me know and we'll talk about it. But um, Chances are, I mean, there's nothing really to disagree with because this is all subjective. I mean, we're talking about people on a budget here. Um, so we can't be talking about all these thousand dollar preamps and, you know, we don't have time for, ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got money for that. You know what I mean? So hope you guys liked the video. If you did, drop me a like. And uh, I got some more stuff coming in the future. All right, peace, everybody.